one must go into this question of what is desire. Because that's the most urgent, vital drive in our life. We are not talking about the desire for a particular thing, but desire itself, not for something. That let's go into it very carefully, because as you have, one must know, all religions have said, if you want to serve God. Subjugate desire, destroy desire, control desire. And all religions have said, substitute for the desire the image thought has created. Right? The image that Christians have. The Hindus, but all the rest of it. You substitute an image for the actual. Follow this. The actual is desire, the burning of it. And one thinks one can overcome that by substituting that for something else. This has been the pattern of all religious thinking, or surrender yourself to that which you think is the master, is the guru, is the symbol, the etc., which is again the activity of thought. I don't know if you are following all this. So one has to very carefully understand the whole movement of desire. For obviously, desire is not love. Desire isn't compassion. Without love and compassion, meditation becomes utterly meaningless, because love and compassion have their own intelligence. It's not the intelligence of cunning thought. So let us together, uh, the speaker means together, not the speaker explains and you follow. Then it will not be, you will be merely followers. Whereas if both of us together, step by step, understand the nature of desire, why it has played such extraordinary importance in our lives, how it distorts clarity, how it prevents the extraordinary quality of love, and so on. It is important that we understand and not suppress, not try to control it, not to direct it in a particular direction, which may give you peace and all the rest of it, but rather examine together, please together, the nature and the movement of desire. Shall we go on? You are not tired? It's nice and warm here.
Please bear in mind, the speaker is not trying to impress you, guide you, help you, nothing. But together we are walking, perhaps in hand in hand, along a very subtle, complex path. And one has to listen to each other. One has to listen to find out the truth about desire. When one understands the truth of the, the significance, the meaning, the fullness, the truth of desire, then desire has a quite a different value or drive in one's life. And also one must look at something else too, which is, when you observe desire, are you observing it as an outsider looking at desire, or you are observing desire as it arises? Not desire something separate from you. You are desire. You see the difference? Either I observe desire, which I have when I see something in the window which pleases me, and I have the desire to buy it, And then the object is different from me, right? But the object is different, but desire is me, right? So I have to watch. I, there is a perception of desire without the observer watching desire. 